Right, here we are is the, the crate for the sundial. Hmm. And what we have with this four, there we go, two, three, four, very long bolts. Well, actually they're very long nuts, the tapped, tapped M6. And they've very got a long extension nose on the male piece, so that even when they are unthreaded they don't flop around. And it's to hold the dial in correct location inside the crate so it doesn't knock around and hopefully um, if the men do as I request it should be okay particularly lower gently don't throw it around and for a reusable crate I get returned to me I think we'll have it returned again because it's uh, in good nick it'll uh, last a lot longer and that's the Richard Kell sundial in there that's how it turns up obviously the copper obelisk is a different problem altogether but I don't really make that anymore it's just uh, too difficult. Not easy. Can we hold and get more of a view in there? That's it, we move around. Obviously I need to pack the long skirted nuts and washers that secure the four corners of the dial to the plinth. Uh, the man himself is having a, a stone plinth made, so that's no problem. And uh, they work in a conjunction with M6 roll bolts. Right, there we go. Take another shot. There we go, that's the dial itself. Not easy to photograph actually. Well, not easy to pick up on video, I don't think. Getting a heck of a amount of perspective in here. But, uh, there's the base. And if we pick up there, we have a series of engraved lines for, for degrees per division, which allow you to reset the dial when you move anywhere else. And if we put right down, you can see the, the dovetail construction and also the little pin, the little pin that stops the dovetail sliding and the four location, here we are, the four location pins of nickel silver that grip onto the curved scales. That's quite handy. And there's the Norman, the centre bobbin, which casts a shadow either at the solstice, equinox, or summer solstice at its highest. I wonder if we can pick those up better in the light. Oh, that's good. And the centre joint is quite clever because the rear arc, the rear piece of copper, is formed in a, a custom press tool. It took quite a lot of making actually. So that it conforms to the radius of the, the hour scale. Try not to touch it actually. This thing doesn't want any finger marks on. So there's one on already and I don't know where the heck that came from. So that's not too bad, not a bad little piece of equipment. And the, no the Norman is intentionally left free to rotate with some little pieces loctited in at the top so that if anybody throws a football or anything at it you can just rotate the Norman and see that it still runs through. It's quite a heavy base though, it's uh, 5 8 thick gun metal. Normally I use uh, naval brass but I had already a base available so I've used that. I'm quite pleased with this. Have a look. There we go. So it's a quick and easy little YouTube just to show what the thing looks like. And it's got quite sculptural qualities. Oh, it's quite nice indeed. Quite pleased with that. It's a good design. I like to perfect a design, to work on a on an object and get it as right as I can, as right as can be within that particular design idea. Not bad at all. Alright, that's maybe a better shot of the base. There's the uh, washer and the nut that fits on top of it. It's got a deep skirt so that it can accommodate quite a lot of variation in M6 roll bolts that will secure it to the base. There's a side view of the four location pins at each side that hold the curved sector. What do, what do we call it? Oh, curved bit. And over at the other side, it's one degree latitude per division is engraved on there. And you can see the uh, degree markings to degree divisions. I think it works quite well. It's actually a good piece of design. It's uh, really good indeed, I think. That's it. The Norman is free to rotate if you want it to prove its integrity. And um, I enjoy making that base, I always think it's a very substantial piece of work. 
Looks good.